right, you know. Hi, Mr. Sinclair. So the Glitter Dome isn't a bar, it's a pig pen. And Hollywood isn't a city, it's a land full of broken dreams. Nothing is what it seems. You think this is a cop story. It's not. It's a story about survival. Mine. Malcolm Sinclair, president of American Studios, whose body was found last night in a Hollywood bowling alley parking lot. I'm here with Sinclair's nephew, Herman Sinclair. I'm just stunned. I'm ruled by the lack of evidence. I'm wondering where's his car. He never went anywhere without it. Nobody here does. This is Barry Johnson for KTPX. Now back to you. The 11 o'clock news shows you a body being wrapped in a white sheet. Somebody's got to do the wrapping. Some nights that's me. Other nights I'm here, which isn't so bad if you don't mind getting shortchanged by Wing, the bartender, or herpes from one of the chicken vultures who sooner or later is going to perch on the stool next door. Stiff rod to catch the big fish. No, I know. It's my luck. Oh, no, that was wrong for me to say. What's the matter with me? I should be helping you. Yeah, a little help. <laughs> <laughs> in the bar. I had to pick you. God damn. After a performance like that, it was good to come home to someone who cared. My cat. The affection ran both ways, and it ran deep. Up 
yours. Get off my bed. I mean it. string coming me out, I see. Eat this. I swear it. Welcome to Hollywood Station, where our guest stars appear behind bars, and on weekends, Standing room only. Hi, guys. That's my partner, Marty, moving up the stairs a little quicker than me. That's because he's in better shape than me. Seems like these days everyone's in better shape than me. Gladys? Where the hell is everybody? Morning, Matt. We're hearing roll call. You better hurry. Well, not everyone's in better shape than me. Two days without a suspect, without a clue, without a goddamn break. Simon, where the hell's that witness that you promised me that stood? Skates, skates. Wheels, Captain. Mr. Wheels. Wheels. Mr. Wheels. Well, that's what the neighborhood association calls. Him. The neighborhood association. Well, where the hell is he? Maybe he's at the Derby. The Brown Derby? No, the Roller Derby. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep making jokes, Schultz. You'll be back in Disneyland busting glue snippers. <laughs> I'm taking you and Simon off the case. And I repeat, this has been a very bad year for the most professional police force in America. It used to be the burglary team stealing and selling while investigating an officer arrested in, in the foreign land for smuggling cocaine. An officer's moonlighting as hitmen. Well, I won't be martyred by the media! Dismissed. Well, Vaughn, Mackie, I want to see you in my office. No! Great speech, Captain. Really up with it. Good. Yeah. Now, how about arresting some of those... Dopers and dealers you've been telling me about. We're working on a big one right now. Lives in your neighborhood. What'd you say? Orange deal. Selling chips and bags of cucumbers. Are you pulling my leg? No, no sir. Mm -hmm. Well, then get him! Get him! We will. We will. Ferret and Weasel were the new wave of undercover cops. Captain Wooper had just gotten used to hippies. Punk put him over the edge. Here, Captain. It's an emergency. I want you two guys to take over the Malcolm Sinclair case and clear it. But, Captain, we're not super sleuths. No, but you're the ideal team for this job. You did solve the Clyde Barrington murder, didn't you? And all we did was show that he committed suicide. Exactly. Would I ask you guys to solve anything, huh? But, Captain, this is a little bit different. I mean, it's pretty tough to suggest that Sinclair committed suicide. He had two thirty-eight caliber bullets in his face, and, and they haven't even found the gun, haven't they? Oh, you did solve the case of the PCP dealer who had a hatchet in his forehead, didn't you? you Captain, the hatchet was right there. I mean, all we did was explain that he died from the bruise of the base of the skull from falling on that missing brass Buddha. Great. Captain, there's other things we're working on. Oh, really? Like what? The mutilation case is all wrapped up. The father admitted he castrated the son. It's clear, doesn't it? The Danny Meadows case isn't finished, Captain. It's not, uh... It's not wrapped up. Well, we're wrapping it up now, Captain. Uh, the, uh, the boy's father is copying a plea. The case is closed. Are you all right, well born? A 
trick your partner looks a little shaky, eh? You know, he is going through a marital separation. Yeah, well, if I had five bucks for every divorce cop. Well, I think Marty's been working too hard. What was that? He's been working too hard, sir. Well, maybe he needs a vacation. You too. After the Malcolm Sinclair case is cleared. Clear? Clear. Clear. A violent crime is cleared when a piece of paper is stamped case closed. But Marty couldn't close his mind to the image of Danny Meadows. Going to the studio to talk to Sinclair's nephew? Yeah, yeah, we'll be there in a few minutes. What's taking you so long? Oh, Marty's interviewing a prime suspect. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> really, Marty, 20 minutes. What do you do? Pray or what? Mostly what? Well, I have an opinion. I don't pretend to be an expert on the subject or anything, but I do have an opinion. My opinion is you ought to talk to somebody. Somebody? Yeah, a psychiatrist. What would I say to a psychiatrist? God damn it, Marty, I don't know. I wouldn't know either, Al. Talk about your marriage, how you felt when Paula walked out on you. Tell him how you tough the separation's been on you, how you felt when she took the kids out of the state so you couldn't see them. Look, haven't both your divorces been tough on you? Isn't it tough on everybody? You need to stop it. Come on, move it! <laughs> Calm yourself, my lad. Maybe you ought to go and see the good doctor. When it comes to what cops are really like, the movies haven't got a clue. But you figure when the head of a movie studio gets murdered, somebody there ought to know something, especially the new head of the studio. We thought Herman Sinclair could tell us what his uncle was doing in a bowling alley parking lot. Hey, Marty, isn't that uh, Willie, uh, what's her name? Yeah, Willie, what's her name? That's what I want to serve and protect. Yeah, that's uh, pretty quick, isn't it? It's been two days. Did you know Malcolm Sinclair? I worked for his father when they were still making silence. I knew the whole family. And what kind of guy was Malcolm? Oh, great guy. And I know what killed him. What? The movies they're making today. Would you stop jumping around and listen to me? I loathe everything about him. He's ludicrous. He's got no soul, no balls. And he has no timing. Willie, Willie, he's very, very sexy. You think he's so sexy, you make love to him. Do we have to get into personalities? No. No, you're right. Let's keep it strictly business, okay? Herman, you're a cunt. Got a marvelous boy. Think like a bird. She'll be so fabulous in I'm Sergeant Martin Wellborn, Mrs. Sinclair. This is uh Al. This is my partner, Al Mackey, LAPD. Oh my god, I thought you were the guys from the cable company. <laughs> no. Sorry, we have to ask you all the same questions all over again. No problem. No problem. Name a problem. How about a drink? Oh, that's right, oh dude. Bourbon. A vodka, yeah. Me. Get rid of that furniture and I hate to get rid of those porn films. My family's had a bowling lane in the house since 1929. Built by my grandfather. That my uncle was found in a bowling alley in Hollywood is clearly an indication of how violent and unpredictable Hollywood has become. Actually, the bowling alley itself is closed. Uh, roller skaters use the parking lot. Roller skaters is a bizarre way to exercise. I do aerobics, yoga, nautilus, brain breathing. Thanks, Newly. See you tomorrow. Jog, jump rope. Run all the 10K races, Pulse Race 52. It's a tough and dangerous business, Martin. Mm -hmm. You gotta stay in shape, Al. Yeah, I can believe it, Herman. Uh, dailies. Mm -hmm. You know what they say these days, Al? A million bucks for a star is scale. Clearly, nobody can make a dime anymore. Rapacious, rapacity, rapacination. What kind of gun do you carry, Martin? Uh, snub nose Smith and Wesson 38. That's all? I got an Ingram 32 shell automatic. Come on, we'll go to Daly's. The director murdered the script. Maybe you can arrest him. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
thought it over. The puck is in my blood. I can't leave hockey. I can't leave the team. It's obvious from what you say that the NHL means more to you than love and marriage. But you're the only guy I've ever really been crazy about. Please. Marka. No interruptions. The men from the cable company are here and they're expecting lunch. Uh, I know how much your uncle was revered, Mr. Sinclair. But can you think of anybody who might want to kill him? Green. Where? What? Who? Looks green to me. My dad did a film about a killing like Uncle Malcolm's. Messy. I tell you, Al, you have to get a really good makeup artist to do the blood bags, or nobody's going to buy it when you do a tight close up of a 357 blowing holes in the face. Yeah, I can believe it. Huh? You don't make the audience happy with bullshit holes. I think this guy's very sexy. Now, listen, Herman, do you think we could get back to your uncle? You did know something about his personal life. He was in Confidential Magazine, wasn't he? So is Nancy Rick, and it doesn't make you a bad person. Think kids are gonna like these two together? Yeah, but can't you think of anyone who might want to see your uncle dead? Hey, clearly there's a lot of people out of work. Thank you. I got a great idea. Ruthless, totally ruthless. The studio's giving this huge party, mourning my uncle Malcolm and honoring me. You two come undercover. Everybody in the business is gonna be there. We wouldn't miss it for the world, clearly. <laughs> now he lets you see okay, Daly. Oh, no, you were good, weren't you, Al? Al. Yeah, so good we're shooting it over. Maybe this time he won't drool. What do you guys need? Al. The strong silent type, huh? <laughs> I didn't know Sinclair real well. He uh, did his usual bullshit number with me, and then he offered all the good parts to Meryl Streep. Everyone said he was okay. He was... Okay. Nine okay. Well, uh, do you know of anyone who would want to kill him? His nephew did it. Herman. A little creep. Gas him. First team! Let's shoot it and put it out of its misery. See you later. Nice talking to you. Especially you. Sinclair's body was found at the parking lot. Shot on location is how Marty put it. We had one measly lead. Captain Wooper had told us about a Mr. Wheels who'd been seen at the parking lot the night Sinclair was killed. All we had to do was find him.
My problem was typical. Cops can stop caring. Marty's problem was more serious. Cops can also care too much. What is the first thing they taught you when you joined the force? Do not become involved. Everything is getting to you these days. Every juvenile in L.A. is not your personal responsibility. End of lecture. Oh, boy, did I have a dream last night. <laughs> My second ex and I got together, and we were making love. All of a sudden, I'm in horrible pain. I wake up, the cat's got his claws in my crotch. <laughs> I, uh, I guess we should start by assuming they dumped the body in the bowling alley parking lot. The pathologist says he was killed on the spot. Did you get anything from Simon and Schultz? Mm -hmm. Good luck. Fuck you very much. Jesus, we might actually have to solve this one. Interviewing the close friends of our slain movie mogul led us to Harvey Himmelfarb, an outstanding member of the film community. I don't mind telling you, if it hadn't been for Malcolm Sinclair, I could very easily have been convicted on an embezzlement charge. False charge, I might add. Then I needn't tell you what the press can do to someone when they're out to get them. Drop baby. Mm. Eleanor St. Dennis's star faded when talkies came in. But it soon became obvious why she had once been called America's sweetheart. Malcolm turned into a cheaty, lying, sniveling boor. But when he was a young man, he gave great head. We weren't getting anywhere meeting Malcolm's friends one at a time, so we decided to go to Herman's party. But it was obvious he had none of his uncle's class or influence. The party lured some top-of-the-line folk, but the majority seemed straight off the rack, like maybe the kids selling maps to the movie stars' homes were also handing out invitations to Herman's party. But what the hell, it's not every day you get a chance to solve a case of French champagne. Hi, Herman. Uh, Mackie, well-born LAPD? Oh. Marty. Marty! Hey, I'd like you to meet. Listen, if there's uh, anybody you want me to introduce you to, just let me know. Any girls, any, you know what I mean? But have a good time. Mingle, 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 mingle. Oh, uh, listen, listen. You guys getting anywhere on my uncle's murder? No, not so much happening yet. No? Too bad. Have a good time. Mingle. <laughs> I feel like we're working burglary again. That's enough. Oh, oh, mingo, Marty. Come on, have a good time. I'm not afraid to have a good time. Who knows, maybe you meet. Who? What? Whatever. Oh, hey. You can hurt her. Mingo, mingo, mingo. Studied law, psychology, 
He was hanging around the Beverly Hills Police Department. But no one ever took me seriously. Finding any likely suspects? Her. She's a killer. <laughs> Tell me. I've never spent time with a policeman, socially. Here in business? Well, yeah, we're, uh, we're still investigating the Sinclair murder. Herman invited my partner and me. Uh, the movie line for that would be, it's, it's not, not official. official. Yeah, <laughs> Shall we investigate? Yeah. Uh, hey, Marty, Marty, pal. Look, uh, Al, my back is killing me. I, I'm gonna go home. Oh, come on. Was it something I didn't say? Oh. Hi. Hi. Having a good time? Yeah. Wee! Yeah, go with it. <laughs> I'm gonna go home. My, uh, I, uh, I gotta go. This isn't my uh, cup of tea. This isn't anybody's cup of tea. Well, I don't know. I'm just beginning to feel at home. You know, I've only been here an hour or so. I've got three films in development. <laughs> uh, you develop a film after you <laughs> shot it. <Yeah>. Now. <laughs> Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, uh, take the car. I'll be okay. I'm sorry. Sure. Take care. Take care of your back. Should we investigate a little more? Why not? Sure. German pharmaceuticals? Oh. You know, any of these, uh, they ever do any kind of porno film? Who, not me? No, 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 I don't mean you. I, I mean any of the producers. We have a suspect who might have connections. Pornography's legal these days, Sergeant. I was thinking about kiddie porn. Sergeant, you dickens, you. Yeah. <laughs> not me. That all you cops are a little bent, huh? Huh? God, I really wish Malcolm was still with us. You know that he had the, I mean, the largest hardcore porn collection in the world. Yeah. Malcolm? Where are your handcuffs, Al? <clears throat> Are my handcuffs are right here. Get your handcuffs, Al. What for? You got a handcuff me to something. Uh, why would I, I want a handcuff for me? Just put them on me. Yeah, well, okay, 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 okay. Uh, Give him to me here. Now, handcuff me. Uh, yeah, I can oh. help you. Okay. I'll have to do it. Okay, now. Now, now handcuff me to something. Like what? That stool. That stool. Handcuff me to the stool. Right, if I, this oh, is make me feel helpless. It only weighs about a pound and a half. You yes, can sir. pull away from that. Uh, get something for my eyes, quick, quick. Well, what do you want for your eyes, Willie? Anything, a towel, a goddamn towel. Towel. Quick. Oh, that's how, how, here, how about my tie? Oh, that's wonderful. Your tie would be wonderful. What do you want me to do with it? Just put it on my eyes and then, oh, wrap it around. Oh, yes, and then fold it under my head. Oh, oh. Oh, Willie, what, what am I supposed to do, huh? Oh, I'm blindfolded, and I'm handcuffed, and, and oh, I'm helpless, you filthy girl. I, I can't stop you. I, I can only bend with you. I can only plead and plead. Don't rape me. Oh, don't rape me, you raping bastard. Yeah, I won't. Oh, I'm, I'm as helpless as a baby. I'm like a 10-year-old child. Oh, stop it. 
Stop it. Stop it. You're just making it worse. <sighs> Jesus, you're supposed to ravish me. What the hell's wrong? Well, I don't know. Let's talk about handcuffs and wrapping a tie around your eyes and everything. With the You'd think the lady would let me ride home in silence, but no. How was it for you? But seriously, folks. Hey, Papa, don't do a roast on me. You are a very funny guy for a cop. I mean it uh, about the funny. I, uh, I think you're racist. I... <clears throat> I'm sorry. I wish it hadn't happened like that. Especially seeing it was my fault. Want to see me again? Nothing strange, you know, like, uh, like real people, maybe? Babble, 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 babble. <clears throat> it really makes me nervous that you feel so bad. I like you. I like you, and, uh, here. Here's the glove. We'll pick you right up. Oh. Well, do me, would you? Hey, don't push your luck. Hey, I don't want to be depressed, too. I got a long drive home. Come on. Hey, you want to fuck yourself up? Okay, you fuck yourself up. I don't want to watch it, all right? It's poison. It'll mush your mind. It'll put canyons in that pretty face of yours. And booze is good for you, huh? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It sure will... Yeah! It was comforting to know there was always one six-inch piece that never failed to fire. Maybe you want to go with me. Right between your friggin' horns. Sergeant Wilbur? Elliot, what is it? I know who killed that paper boy. Chewy Verdugo. He's hanging out selling reds at the high school. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's good work, Elliot. Everything else okay? Good, man. Everything's cool. Good. All right. I'll talk to you soon, son. Good night. Good night, man. I'd always felt that a cop and a snitch could form a weird family if they got too involved. Elliot had a father, Marty had a son. It was dangerous. Marty, open up. God damn it. Marty, are you in there? Marty? God damn it, Martin. Uh, am I a man dreaming I'm a butterfly or a butterfly dreaming I'm a man? You're a freaking idiot. That's what you are. Help me get up, partner. <sighs> Devil is this thing? You ever seen one of these? It's a spine straightener. You know, I have back problems. I have problems. You got head problems. You know, I've been standing outside your door for five minutes banging on it. I thought you were probably in the shower, fell down, broke your neck. I had to slip the 
lock with my police car. Well, I'm glad those things are good for something. The power of positive thinking. The goals are gold. A seek seeks? You kidding? Oh, I'm thinking of retiring, becoming a guru. Well, you're a cop, Marty. That's what you are. That's what you do. What do you think? It's brand new. You like it? Do I glitter when I walk? You glitter, Martin. Ever since Paula married her real estate hustler, I got nothing else to spend my money on. Contrary to Captain Wolfer's wishes, we weren't hot on the trail of anything except burritos. Marty had Elliot's tip about a teenage hitman. I figured Sinclair could wait. His name is Chewy Verdugo. He uh, hangs around the school selling reds and recruiting gang members. How big is he? You want to be one of those faggots? You know, one of those uniforms? Oh, lay off, Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Tell you, Marty, I'm too old for this shit. Huh? I get calls from the new service. The 60 Minutes wants to know what the hell happened to Malcolm Sinclair's killer, and you guys are chasing after teenagers at Lincoln High. Marty wanted him. Marty wanted him. I'm going to whack balls around here. I swear it. Marty wanted this one, and I want Marty to get what he wants for a change. Excuse me, Captain. Do you know where my partner is, Chewy? He's down the hall. You know what he's doing? He's booking the rifle that you used to shoot down that paper, boy. You're going to be going away for a long time. I can't hear what you're saying, man. Huh? I can't. Maybe you'd hear better if you talk about the kid you ran down in Tucson. Tucson, huh? Yeah, Tucson! Ooh, who led Tucson? <laughs> I never ran over nobody, man. I never even been to Tucson. Talking to some homeboys in the pool hall. Some Mexican dude named Melly. He was passing out some grief. I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear some bad talk, so I made some up. about the paper boy. It was Elliot, huh? Oh, what a stupid. Running a stupid bluff like that. I burned him. Oh, that's so chewy but to go knows Elliot. What's the difference? Chewy's gonna be in jail a long time. Listen to me. You're falling from grace. The grace of poise, police poise. You know what I mean? Just drop it out. No, no, I'm not gonna drop it. This is not some pep talk. This is from me to you. So listen, huh? Police poise is a state hanging just above hell. It's hot, it burns. Read your books, become a Sikh, whatever you want. But stay above it. Remain above it, Marty. Come on, please, baby. Poise, pal, poise. It's tragic. Senseless. Much like Malcolm's life, in fact. Symbolic, even. Not without irony. He lied pathologically, even when there was no purpose. The way Sinclair's friends talked about him, we began to think maybe he committed suicide and dumped his own body in the parking lot. While we were hobnobbing with the Hollywood hacks, the two undercover clowns, Ferret and Weasel, were collecting the first real hard clues in the Sinclair case. Only they didn't know it. They were staking out an ex-con named Bozeman and his Asian pal. They were selling kitty porn to two old farts and a menopause maiden down at the harbor. The deal went sour. Oh, my God. 
Asian left Ferret crying mama. But Weasel found all kinds of intriguing items in Bozo's Cutlass. Unreal. The old folks think they're getting a good deal on some kitty porn. Joker, move! Shit, sucker! Said move it! What? Here's the guy we picked up last night. I think he's the Asian boss. His name is Bill Bozen. Three years Colorado for arm. Fourteen months marrying a conspiracy and mail fraud. The cutlass was rented in Bozen's name. Oh, he's out already. I'm 15 G. Bam. G. A couple of phone numbers in the wallet to slope drop. Well, this number's America Studios, Sinclair Place. Yeah, I know. We called it. You have the numbers of Greasy Spoon or an Ivar. Bookie named Farrell runs it. So who's Sapphire? Could be a blackjack. Jam. Something. On the surface, Malcolm Sinclair and Sapphire Productions had nothing in common except a phone number. But Bozeman made pornos, and Sinclair collected them. You didn't need gypsy blood to make a connection. Was it possible Bozeman was making kitty porn for Sinclair? What do you know about these Sapphire guys? Oh, some bums were here about a month ago. They come and they go. Producers, writers, directors, actors, never changes. It's a mining town. Sapphire Productions. Mackie, that's you. Captain Wolfer? Get back down here. We found the Marine with this phone number. Yeah, all right. We'll be right in. The Marine came to us courtesy of a Slezoid modeling studio in Hollywood. He had been posing nude for a gaggle of gay sculptors when a riot broke out and the blue suitors were called in. That wasn't unusual. The strange thing was, the Marine had Malcolm Sinclair's name and the Sapphire Productions phone number scrawled on the back of his ID card. Who gave you the phone number? Oh, uh, some man came to see me at the modeling studio. He said he wanted me to audition for a movie job. Gay guy? I don't know. But I'm not. Well, this movie they want you to make, is that a porn flick? That's what I figured. I mean, there I was a model and all that. Gay porn flick? Oh, no, sir. It was absolutely not a gay porn flick. Because a girl was going to be in it. What girl? Her name's Jill, I think. Jill, you know how to reach her? No, sir. All right, the guy you're supposed to call, who was it, Malcolm Sinclair? No, sir. I met Mr. St. Clair at his screening. He was really nice and... He said I was the best looking man he'd ever seen. The man who auditioned you, did he, uh, did he mention Mr. Sinclair? No, sir. Now, son, I want you to think very carefully. Did you ever tell Mr. Sinclair where you could be located? I told him he'd get in touch with me through the modeling studio. Well, Mr. St. Clair must have told the guy how to find me. Okay, son. You go back to your company now. I'm going to give you my card. If you think of anything else, you just call us. Yes, sir. Do you mean if I hear anything about Mr. Sinclair or the guy in the silver rolls? Silver what? It's 1939 rolls. It's a real collector's item. Uh, anything at all, son. Movie stars and detectives have one thing in common. They never know where the next lead is going to come from. Marty and I were following one trail, Ferret and Weasel another, and then two uniformed street monsters came up with a gem of their own. Calm down, girl. Calm down, girl. I didn't kill nobody. You can see a lot of last words about a guy checking out like that. I didn't kill him. Well, in a manner of speaking, you did. I'm still shaking. I don't know. I, I don't even remember my mother's phone number. Calm down. I think we can live without your mother's phone number if you can just remember who gave you this one. I, I, I'm sorry that man's dead. I'll, I'll give you back his money. You can give it to his wife. Do you know the writing? I think this here's Lulu's handwriting. No, it ain't Lulu's. This here's Jill's handwriting. Jill? Yeah, Jill give me this number. It's a, a, a movie studio. What you call them offices you go to to get in a movie? A casting office? Yeah, Jill gave me this number in case I wanted to get in the movies, too. Uh, well, do you uh, know Jill's last name? No horse got a last name. 
The Jesuits did a hell of a job on Marty. He still liked to chalk it up on the board, link by link. We were forging the endless chain. The California DMV had no registration on the 39 rolls to Sinclair or anybody else, but somebody was driving it. If Bozeman was making kitty porn for Sinclair, it was only Hollywood etiquette that somebody involved drove a Rolls. Hey, uh, you think the guy in the Rolls could be connected to Bozeman? I don't know. There's an awful lot of street folks with this phone number. Well, if it leads to the slope, I want to be there when you take him down. You got it. Day or night. We promise. So, it looks like Farrell the bookie's the only one left we got to see. Let's do it. Come on! Show you what I do, go with just what he's got his own recon. What? This father made a plea in the judgment. Wait a minute, I got no! Hey, you got crazy again. Hey, Alice. Hey, Lick. Marty, I'm going with you. No. So, Marty, listen to me now. Do not get crazy about this. I got it, all right? No, wait a minute. If you know, he's my child. I keep him going, I keep him alive. He's an informant. He's all I got! What did you like? Let's talk with Ellie. What, man? You gotta leave town. What? I was cresting Verdugo. I blew it, he knows. Jesus, madre. You took our Venus in the street. It was an accident. Now, I can uh, help you go somewhere. Go where, man? You go to another town. I have never been out of the barrio, Sergeant. I am being nowhere. Chewing his gun. They're gonna find me, they're gonna... No. I won't let them. You from me some breath? How much do you need? Give me a cure. Twenty-five. I'm gonna cheap it little. Go to the beach. I never been to the beach. I'd better go now, huh? I'm sorry, I made it. Me too, man. Sal si puedes, eh? The only thing that's deteriorated faster than the Earth's atmosphere is Hollywood Boulevard, which on any given night is a great place to take the family if you want to sell your kids. Farrell the bookie had been part of Bozeman's phone book, so we went to see if he could connect Bozeman to the Rolls Royce. But Farrell went us one better. He also knew Bozeman's street name. Everyone called him Lloyd. There's a guy comes in here, drives the 1939 Rolls Royce. Start with him. The guy that drives the Rolls? Name's Lloyd. We know that. His last name. I don't know. How'd you meet him? He knows, um, he knows somebody I know. Hey, you want us to walk out of your miserable life right now, huh? He knows my daughter. Your daughter? Yeah. Her name's Peggy. She's only 15 years old. She's, um... He said he was trying to help her. She ran away from home 13 months ago. She's into drugs and maybe some other things. Prostitution? He, um, this guy Lloyd, he came here one night with Peggy. She wanted to get some things belong to her mom. And well, where did she go? I don't know. And neither does Lloyd. Because he left her on a street corner. Been back two, three times since looking for her. Lloyd comes back, you make a date with him for Peggy. He don't call her Peggy. He calls her Jill. Well, that's her street name, I guess. Jill. Here we go. Farrell, Peggy, juvenile, incarcerated. 
committed 48 hours ago. County juvenile home. All right, later. What was Farrell's daughter busted for? Prostitution? You got it. You know, you're a hard girl to find. Call me easy if you know where to look. <laughs> it's not where, it's what you're called. Jill, Peggy. How long ago did you run away? Well, I ain't really run away. I mean, my dad is hip to the fact that I never left Hollywood. And where do you live now, Peggy? Around. Around? Yeah, like a donut. <laughs> now, why don't you want to tell me where you live? Because I live with somebody. Is it a man? The man you work for? No, I live with a woman. Is she your lover? Well, now, that's none of your business. Oh, they've already processed her. But she's free to go with us. You want to talk to us some more down at the station, Peggy? Hey. Hell, yes. I mean, if I can get out of here. <laughs> well, the dude gave me, like, $20. Just go down, call a number, and ask Mr. Silver at Sapphire Productions. Is he Silver? No. Damn! I know this man. How? Oh. Well, I gave him a massage. It was an out call. It tipped me 30 bucks. How do you remember him, Peggy? The $30 tip? No. It wasn't the money. Well, he said real pretty things to me, you know. He said that he slept with some of the most beautiful women in the world. He never saw skin as beautiful as mine. You know where you can find Lloyd? Sapphire Productions. They're out of business. They might look from around Chinatown. They might? Well, Lloyd can speak Chinese. How do you know? Because he said a few words to the houseboy that brought us the drinks. What houseboy? What do they look like? I don't know. Some Oriental guys, all. Well? Well, what? Is this Lloyd? Uh, easy now, Ferret. <laughs> Why don't you let us handle this, son? Do you know him, Peggy? That's to do. So Bozeman is Lloyd. We got him. Oh. All right. I'm going to take you home to your father's place. Marty took Peggy home to her father, Farrell the Bookie. Weasel and Ferret went looking for the Asian, and I was supposed to dig up Bozeman, who proved to be as slippery as he was slimy. He had jumped bail. So I went to see my prime suspect. Maybe this time I could get some answers. Hi. Got a search warrant? How about this? That'll do. Come in. I got your address out of the computer at Motor Vehicles. Good work, Detective. Well, I thought about fabricating some tale about investigations and police business, but I didn't figure you'd go for that. I just happened to be in the neighborhood. My shrink knows all about you. Oh, my God, you did look. Tell her everything. She says I'm lucky I'm not in jail. Look, I didn't mean to play judge on you the other night. Are you apologizing to me? Well, not for what I said, just my delicate way of handling it. You got plans? I'm putting my records in order, which is what I always do before I clean up my act. Can I help? Sure. Yeah. With the country there, rock there, and classical there. I can make it a... I can make a pizza from scratch. Fantastic. Takes hours. Good. I'm not the girl you met at the party. I'm really not. I didn't bring any handcuffs. Oh. Texas swing. It's incredible. <laughs> you really are old fashioned. Wait till you see me make love. You know, they 
asked me on a talk show once why I thought drugs were so prevalent in Hollywood. And I answered, because it's the material we have to do. Got a big laugh, but I'm half convinced it's true. Uh, you quit when you want to. Where we bother? Uh -huh. The worst part is seeing people you care about hurt themselves. Thank you. Doing only about my work? Oh, yeah. Good part comes along and I still get excited. Isn't that love? That's something. Pretty empty, huh? Well, as long as you love something, it doesn't really matter. Don't you love anything? Yeah. Yeah, my partner. He's hurting and there's not a thing I can do about it. Why? Marriage and his family's gone. How oh, Marty, he's a, he's a religious guy. It doesn't seem to help him much. We see things sometimes, cops, other people don't see. It leaves stains. When you're investigating and, and collecting clues? <laughs> we don't collect clues. We collect garbage and pray somebody confesses. That's Marty's line. We went out on a call, and unfortunately, he went in first. What happened? Child abuse. Grotesque. Disappointment gets to you. Disillusionment becomes the enemy. And trying to get over that, that's the big thing. Get back to what you wanted and believed in in the first place. I've heard myself say those exact words a hundred times. The same way I do. Or what I thought I was going to do. check for Ruth, alimony check for Sylvia, shaving cream blades, find out about Sinclair's movie with the rolls in it. What movie? It was an old one I saw on TV the other night. Oh, um, Jealous Season, right? It was on the night of the party. Right. Damn, this pizza's good. Hey, I gotta be at the studio in 30 minutes. I have to be at the studio 10 minutes ago. Peggy Farrell's lover, Lorna Dillman, had an eye for detail as well as teenage girls. She was a script supervisor and from every indication, one who followed the action real good. We needed to know if she knew anything about our kiddie porn producer and the skating cameraman. Did Peggy tell you about the men who asked her to go to the desert? Yes. It's obviously kiddie porn, wouldn't you think? Well, she's not a real kiddie in that sense. They could take a kid like Peggy and make her look 12. But I suspect they'll spice up their little film with real toddlers, 10 years old, younger. Pedophiles have a saying, eight is too late. Yeah, but, uh, what makes you think that's what they were up to? 
They offered her $3,000 for three days, and they're going to the desert. They have to be going for the real toddler stuff. Wouldn't you be able to guess who they might be? The man Lloyd in the roles, the man who calls himself Mr. Silver. We think he's a, a guy named Griswold Veal, says he's a cameraman. Filth who makes those kinds of film? We're not in the same business at all. Gentlemen? Yeah, uh, thank you for your time, Miss Dillman. Thank you. Halloween in Hollywood is redundant, but we figured a sure way to enjoy the celebration was to visit Beals with the cameraman one more time and really bust his chops. Weasel volunteered to make the play under deep cover, deep cover, even for an undercover cop. Hey, Mr. Weasel, you look sexy tonight. What do you want to do, honey? Damn it. Oh, you got a van. Ah! Deloitte, Sinclair, how'd you make it for us, is that right? Yeah. Where'd you shoot? How'd work? Where'd you shoot up? It was some house that, uh, it was some house that Malcolm owned, I think. Do you remember the address? <laughs> it's house on top, a little canyon on top of a cul-de-sac on top of a little canyon. still didn't know who owned the roles. But it was Malcolm Sinclair's blood, and it was Malcolm Sinclair's film, and it was Peggy Farrell in those films. And the films were well shot. And the sound was good. And the acting was real. The implications were hideous, but Marty felt certain he knew the motive for Sinclair's murder. Better than that, he had a suspect. Oh, Peggy, let me ask you one more question. Uh, how much were you going to get? Eight thousand. How much? Eight thousand for three days. In Mexico. Did you tell Lauren about Lloyd and about the offer? Well, I told Lauren I was going to do it. Well, what did she say? She said she wouldn't let me do it, so she called my dad and told him not to tell Lloyd where I was. She knows your dad? Only on the telephone. When we first got together, she called and told him almost everything. You know, that she was taking care of me and all, and trying to get me off the streets. She even gave him her name and phone number to get in touch with me if he really wanted to. Did Lorna tell your dad about the danger you were in? I only told him what he needed to know. Can we go outside for a minute? Are you okay? I'd like to advise you as to your constitutional rights. You have the right to remain silent. If you give her the right to remain silent, anything you, you say can't... You think I killed Sinclair? We do. And why would I want to kill him? After Peggy had her audition, you were outraged. You went to the house in Laurel Canyon. I think you broke in and saw enough there to find out just what kind of film they were going to make in this desert. And what was that? A snuff film. A snuff film? How interesting. And then what? Well, you phoned Griswold and 
warned him to change his plans. You have a deep voice. You wanted to sound like a man. And then? And then uh, you found out from Farrell that Lloyd was looking for Peggy. You decided to kill Lloyd. You knew which night Peggy was supposed to be leaving, so you waited in the parking lot until the rolls drove up. You were shocked to see a man in that car that you knew. I did not know Malcolm Sinclair. You knew his face. You shot him twice with the 38. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, and then you say can will be used against you. May I have a piece of notebook paper? And your pen, please. I would like you to call the production manager on the last show that I just finished. I would like you to question him thoroughly and then question every witness that he gives you. I want you to be absolutely satisfied that on the night that Malcolm Sinclair was killed, I was on location in Kenya. I would like you to do all of that, and I do not require an apology. But if you ever bother Peggy or me again, I will sue you up, down, and sideways. Damages, harassment, defamation. And I have got a great fucking lawyer. She wasn't bluffing, Marty. I know we got most of it right. On the snuff film. That makes sense. I mean, they found the bodies of other girls out in the desert. Now, Bozeman and his friends are all thugs. Every one of them's a killer if there's enough money in it. Oh, now. Hey, hello. Thank you, sir. Yeah? The roles in the TV show Jealous Seasons was kept by Malcolm Sinclair. The art director told me that he wanted it. And what Malcolm wants, Malcolm gets. Got. All right, I'll talk to you later. Did you good, huh? You did great. See you later, Copper. Bye. <laughs> hey, let's go. I like it. Here you go. Thanks. I don't see anybody blackmailing him. Sinclair. I mean, he had whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted it. Boys, girls, children. Whatever he wanted. Hollywood is an evil mother grabber. No, Hollywood is no more evil than Hannibal, Missouri. There's no good and no evil. It's just an accident. <laughs> there is no grabbing. The earth sucks. Now, I think I'm on to something. But don't say anything about it just yet, okay? How am I going to say something if I don't know what it is? Somebody knows that Peggy is going to do a snuff film. But the only way that somebody knows how to stop it is to kill the person behind it. Hey, well, Brett, you're talking Dean got off. What? Elliot Ramos? Yeah. Oh, God. Stabbed 17 times on the beach. Left him looking like a sieve. Oh, Marty. Marty. Oh, uh, Marty. Come on. Talk to me, Marty. <laughs> Come on, let's go back inside and have a drink. No, Marty, Marty, come here, come here. All right, come on, let's go someplace else and have a drink. Oh, Marty, it's not your fault. Right, come on, Marty, we'll go to your place, we'll have a drink. Ow. I need to be alone. Just give me that. I'm cool. I swear, all right? Okay.
it, but yeah, I told him I qualified last month. I yeah. the range every night. You crazy? Yeah, you always run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Gibbs, look at this. Don't those plates look familiar? Hey, the yeah. bones. Come on, honey. Come on. Come on, honey. Come on. Come on. I'm good. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. Good job. I don't want to do it anymore. Now, look, honey, now you promised me you weren't going to get scared. Didn't you? Huh? You said that. I want you to get your towel off. I want you to get over on the bed with Steven. I want you to do it now. I said do it now. I don't want to do it anymore. Karen. Okay, I'm going to save the lights. Just, just, now, now listen. Don't make me get angry, all right? Look, if she's not gonna do it, I'm gonna... Shut up! Just shut up! Now do it. Now! I want to talk to him. 
wise-ass young doctor says he don't want detectives hovering over deathbeds. Says it's bad for the patient's morale. I'm not too concerned with anybody's morale right now. Any of you guys seen Marty? No. Nah, Nobody? Him? Looks small. God damn it, Ferret. Don't tell me they all look alike. Is it him or not? Well, he looked so different when he was grinning at me. You want me to tickle the son of a bitch? It's him. I think. Get out of here. I'll take his dying declaration. They say he don't speak English. Get out of here. I may not get a promotion, a pension, or a pot to piss in, but I was goddamn sure gonna get a confession. getting at. Farrell kills Sinclair. You! You killed Sinclair, didn't you? You dare come to Marty's funeral, you son of a bitch! Uh, please, 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 Mr. Mackey! How do you know my name? God damn no, you! Sergeant Wilburn told me. He told me you might come here. You're lying! No, no, no he gave something. For, he gave me something to give to you, Mr. Mackey. He, he told me you might come. He was so, so decent to me when he came that day. Aloysius, my boy. You've already cleared the case. Go home. It's over. Have a drink for me sometime. Love, Marty. You did it to protect your daughter from a snuff film. Sergeant Wilburn. 
He said, killing that man wasn't an evil thing. We finally saw one partner. Marty let him go, so I let him go too. Glitter Dome is a pig pen, but where else would I go to have that drink for Marty? Hi, Al. How are you? I know about what happened. I read it, and then I realized who it was. I'll be okay. Can I have a beer? Wing? Beer. I'm I'm assuming it was you who left your phone off the hook. That message on my machine? That was meant for just about everybody in the world except you. That's my problem. Well, I guess we could get out on the dance floor and I could show you what the 1950s was all about. Or we could... We could go back to my place and derive pleasure from one another? In the grand manner. Well, certainly. Wing. 86 the beer. Well, what is your deduction, Holmes? Do we have a future? Well, we sure got a tawdry past. <laughs> you know, I do have a vacation. I'll cash in my first class ticket and get you a car. Really? Damn right, I'm playing a cop. You could be my technical advisor. Fantastic. When are we going? Now. Where are we going? No gallop. No gallop? Yeah, it'll be fun. What's it about? It's a cop story. Does the hero solve the crime and get the girl in the end? How'd you know? That's Hollywood. 